<clears throat> okay, you should have host capabilities now. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Good evening, everyone. I'm Thomas de Grot. I'm uh, currently Asterisk Herald. I'm out of North Cape. And I'm going to present tonight about what I do as Asterisk Herald. It's, it's not a glamorous job. It's not, uh, it's not really high profile outside of the College of Heralds, but it is an important one because all of those all of those names and devices that go up and get registered, they start on an internal letter and I'll go through and I'll do a basic overview of the process. And then I will, uh, and then I'll go through a little bit more of a little of the nuts and bolts. And then we'll, uh, and that and a lot of the nuts and bolts are putting together that internal letter. And I see uh, Borger Herald, Brian O. William has just popped in. Welcome, hey. Brian. Hello. Uh, I tend to prefer more of like a round table style. So especially once I've, once I've presented the basics, if you have a question, ask. Unmute, just unmute and ask. It's a lot easier that way, and you won't risk forgetting what you were going to ask. So the whole heraldic submission process, the view from 30,000 feet, is submitter fills out the forms, usually with the consulting herald, to help, prim mostly for documentation purposes. and sends it into a local herald. Their local herald will usually scan it, sometimes still sends hard copies to asterisk, which is me. And I will process them onto an internal letter of intent. I am going to, I am not entirely sure how to, I'm not entirely sure how to share screen. You should have a, green arrow in the bottom that sh says oh share there screen. it is yeah okay and this is this is the screen that gives that is starting a new internal letter of intent it actually i believe it also it's the same screen for starting an external letter and an april 1st letter but I do the intern. I just do the internal letters, and I have not yet started one for this month. So I'm going to start one. I will do it tonight. And everything comes on an internal letter of intent. This stays in Kingdom Commentary for one month, slightly more, because I, I, t I try to put the internal letter out on the third of the month and have it close on the 10th of the following month. So there's always a salutation text, and mine tend to be pretty much the same. Uh, it just says that these are these are what we're intending to register this month, and a, a salutation. Uh, the footer I usually try to thank I usually try to thank commentators in advance because it's. It's in a lot of ways a thankless job to do commentary, but again, it's very important. 
it will stay on an, submissions will stay on an internal letter for a month. We will have a decision meeting that Bourdieu Herald runs that is on the Sunday after the letter closes. It is, it is generally open to all. It's a public meeting. Uh, one of the, the way Brian usually puts it, and I like how he puts it is, you get to see how the sausage is made. Um, So again, this is this, these are standard, uh, these are standard header and footer that I put in. Uh, thank you to all commentators for sharing your expertise. Uh, sometimes I put it, sometimes I'll, spe I'll especially thank certain people. Uh, recently, I thanked Brian for his services, Bourdieu. I've thanked, I've thanked specific people a couple of times. Uh, I really, I'm probably due to thank Green Anchor, who is, a, is who actually comments as a group. There's actually a group that comments under Green Anchor, but they do a lot. They do a lot of work on a lot of letters, and they do a very thorough job of it. Okay, so So the next thing is, and it says there is already a letter. Okay, it doesn't like, it's not liking. I'll just backdate it today. And when I actually finalize the letter, which I'm not going to go into on that in this class because I'm not I don't, I'm not going to have one to finalize. When that when that actually gets finalized, I can re-edit the uh, header and footer text. So that's always so I always double check and double check everything. Then this is the real meat. So when I get when I get forms in and I'm not going to show you actually processing a form because the biggest thing that you have to worry about as asterisk is PII personally identify identifying information you as the, as someone who gets who has his hands on the forms or her hands on the forms you see all the personally identifiable information like for instance there is a there is a form there's a uh, a field for submitter email that needs to be filled out because the college needs to have uh, the College of Arms at the society level needs to have a contact, needs to have a way to contact the submitter. Also, Arbalist, who does notifications, needs to have a way to contact the submitter when the, the uh, final letter of acceptance and return comes out. We need a way to contact the submitter if something comes up in commentary that needs to be addressed, either at kingdom or at society. So we are custodians of personally identifying information. And it's important to keep that protected. So I will get forms in, I will process them, I will, if they're not already, if they're not already in that form, I will make them into a 300 DPI JPEG form because that's the form that Oscar can read. 
Oscar is the online system for commentary and response. That is how all of the heraldry submissions are handled. And it's a little fiddly. It can only read three, it can only read JPEGs and the best, the best results are from 300 dot per inch. <clears throat> so once it's gone through kingdom, it will go to society. It goes to society for three months, three months of commentary. This, some of this is because some of this is a holdover from the old days where commentary was all hard copy and done through the postal through the postal system. So you would, so if you were on the mailing list, you would receive a packet every every month with wow <laughs> with all the letters from all the kingdoms hmm. and you'd do commentary and you'd send it back and one of the reasons why laurel commentary especially is so limited is again a holdover from when you, they had to send out a not insignificant packet every month and that packet included all the commentary from the previous month that was received as of the cutoff date. So it tended to be one month, you got to see, you got initial commentary, then you got responses, then you got responses to the responses, and that was it. With the online system, you can get a lot more, you can get a lot more, uh, detailed commentary and a lot more back and forth which can be nice and then sometimes it can just devolve into arguments the once it's gone through three months of commentary at society there's a decision meeting the society level decision meeting they have that every month and it and it handles cert and handles the letters from three months earlier, the letters that closed at that point. Then it's sent off for proofreading. There have been times where something or an error has been caught days before the the final letter of acceptance was sent out. So. Proofreading is very important. Now, what we want to we want to get it right. That's the important thing. Is we want to we want to get we ha, we want to get things in accordance with our rules. Our rules are called Sena, the Standards for Evaluation of Names and Armory. Important things to keep. Important things to have bookmarked as a commentary, a commentary herald, or as asterisk, or I'm sure as also, also as Bourdieu, Brian would attest, are the standards for evaluation of names and armory, the administrative handbook, Oscar, uh, the O and A search forms, because sometimes you have to do a conflict check on the fly. Um, and you, so once it's been through proofreading, then they put it onto a letter of acceptance and returns that letter of, that letter gets sent out to a mailing list and it's either accepted, yay, returned for further work, boo, or appended. What they call penned is it's held off for a month, either because it brought up some some question that needs further study, that needs further review, or in a lot of cases anymore, things get pended for new art. The something was off with the art, with the artwork on a device or a badge. So it gets pended for a redraw. 
And that redraw has to get approved by the original submitter, of course. So you'll see, so when you go, when you, if you ever, if you see a letter of acceptance and returns, you'll see acceptances, returns, and pens. Um, Brian, do you have our uh, current acceptance rate for the last sec, for the last few letters? I think it's pretty good. No, that would require me to do numbers and look at statistics. And my uh, liberal arts degrees don't do that. But it's usually around 90, 95%. It's been extremely high as of late, like one to two items every other month. We're, we're pretty high. Woohoo. Yeah. And a lot of that is a credit to, to our in kingdom commentary because we don't send up a lot of things that we we catch things before they go up um, so processing forms i will get a form in there's all kinds of different forms names alternate names devices badges household names order names branch names heraldic titles all of these all of these are supposed all of these do go through do get sent to me because they all start. Oh, well, request for reconsiderations don't start with me. Those go straight to Bourdieu. But but any any kind of new registration comes through me, and it comes on a form. And I'm sure you've all seen the forms. It's it's the standard. College of uh, Kingdom of Ansteora, College of Heralds, name, device, badge, form. They come to me. Hopefully, they come already as JPEGs. But if they don't, that's why I have. That's why I have GIMP. GIMP is basically a free ver like a free version of Photoshop. It's the GNU Image Manipulation Program. I think is the acronym. If it's not if it's not already a JPEG, I open it up in that and make it a JPEG because that's that's how the packet has to go up. When I get a form, let's say it's a name form, it's going to go on that internal letter that we just that we just opened. And the filing name. Okay, for for a straight name form, the filing name is the name that they're they're trying to register. This is for a new name. For an alternate name, the filing name is the primary name because everything at Laurel is filed under your primary name. So let's say I made an alternate persona named. William fall in the well and registered a registered a new name registered that as a name registered a, 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 it would be a badge to him because my because I'm only allowed I'm only allotted one device for my primary but I would make a badge that would be his arms and all of that everything would still be filed under Thomas de Hrote because that's my primary name. So, so even if it, so the, the filing name is the, is the person's primary name. Uh, submitted, the submitted item in case of an alternate name would be the alternate name they're registering. So let's say I, Let's say I really were going to register William Fall in the Well. And let's say let's say I tick the boxes of death. No changes at all. I see I see uh, 
I see Cat, the recently, uh, the recently, the recently Treasure Emeritus, laughing in laughing down there. Uh, so I would like authenticity for. Let's sit. I would like authenticity for 16th century England. Part of the joke is Fall in the Well is a documented late period English name. At least, at least according to uh, Emma. According to Emma, Emma supposedly has found Fall in the Well as a uh, documented by name. And then I would put my email in there. Uh, okay, submission notes. Okay, item to pair this with. So if I had, if, if I were then to uh, put a badge for William Fall in the Well, and put a bat, put a uh, do the badge form, do the badge form, and fill out all the rest. It would show up on here, and the item to pair this with would show up William Fall in the Well name. So, if I were doing a name and a badge for for William, I would pair them so they showed up as one item in the letter instead of two. Okay, submission notes. I always start with where it's where it came from. I would start with where it came from because sometimes that's helpful to sometimes that's helpful to be able to reach back to the local herald to be able to because the local herald usually has better contact with the submitter, is usually better and sometimes less threatening contact with the submitter than if it comes from Bourdieu or Star or even Asterisk. For a name, you always want to, this is where you put your documentation. This submission notes section is where the documentation goes. And it's whatever documentation was submitted with the form. And if you get a form with no documentation, you can reach back to the you can reach back to the originating the originating local or the originating consulting or even the submitter and ask, hey, I didn't get any documentation with this. Do you have any, do you have anything to have anything to support that fall in the well is an actual documentable name. So you can say, yeah, the submitter can say, yes, it's in Reenie and Wilson on page whatever. Okay, great. And then you put in, then you would put in, in that case, R and W page, whatever. And this is why you want the approved administrative handbook, because the administrative handbook has the abbreviations for these name for these name resources that and the list of what's no photo, no photocopy required. So Reenie and Wilson, which is one of the most common resources used for English names is no photocopy required and it's abbreviated R and W. Uh, for Irish Gaelic you see O'Corrigan and Maguire a lot. Uh, Scots, Scots Gaelic you see black a lot. Or someone got it off of the the heraldry.sca.org website, because there's a lot of articles on there. There's a lot of very good articles on there by 
a lot of people who have held the high offices in the uh, society-wide College of Arms. Like uh, Juliana de Luna has a lot of articles up there. Uh, she is the stepping down society, society laurel queen of arms. Uh, as sub, as internal submissions, you get to meet a lot of these higher up people. Um, because you because they're they keep an eye on on submissions. They keep an eye on how th how this is going. And this is not to frighten you. This is to say this is an important job that is noticed. Um, private notes to sovereign. Sometimes if you need to put sometimes I have almost never used this, but occasionally, occasionally if something is really really go really goofy or really screwed up on the form i will put something in there or if it's something that if for instance it's something that i can see from the form that this is instantly going this is an instant failure this is instantly going to fail but i don't want to be the bad guy i can put in there Yes, I know this is yes, I know this is wrong based off of based off of rule X. But I but I don't want to be the bad guy on this. If that makes sense to people. Um, yeah, you know, for one reason or another, that person the submitter is someone that that we don't want to antagonize at the kingdom level uh, the other good one the other inch the other the other thing is a device and if you're uh if you're uh, doing a device, you do need to do one other thing. And that is you need to crop the, you need to crop the form down to get the actual, the actual device, the actual device out of the form. The uh, badge is the same way. Because we don't post PII, because we don't post PII on a pub, on the public website, and I actually had Brian can Brian can tell you because Brian's the one that caught it and took it down and fixed it. I actually had something had we had to pull and retract a letter because of because I accidentally put accidentally put a PII. Not in the act, not in the submission itself, but in the documentation, because doc the documentation that was sent was an email thread, and it had both emails in it, and I didn't even notice. Yes, I didn't even notice that there were e that the email addresses hadn't been redacted. So, yeah, we had to redact we had to redact them. Um, but again, that's this is these are the things you watch out for. It's the things you have to watch out for. It's that's not one of those things that goes away is 
It's not one of those things that goes away. And it's one of the things that I keep coming back to because it's that important. We don't put out personally identifying information. Uh, so for a device, you have black and white full size emblazoned, color full size emblazoned. Um, I'm just, I'm just going to grab two that were. I'm just going to grab something from my files. I'm just going to grab from my files a an an old one. I'm just going to grab one from, I don't think my friend will mind because I'm not actually going to submit. I'm not actually going to submit this. I'm going to kill it once we, I'm going to kill it once we come out, but. But once you've actually submitted it, once you've actually gotten through all of it, you hit save item and that'll, that'll commit it onto that letter. So I'm just going to hit go to proof. This is this is not a finalized letter. This is the in process. This is in process. But if you notice, if you notice, I have new device associated with William Fallenwell, submitted through North Key, Perineum Wilson, page whatever. And I have a line, I have a line art, I have a color art, and I have a color corrected. Oscar does this because not everything, because not the Crayola markers that we that we use are remarkably consistent, but not everyone uses exactly the same. Crayola markers and not everyone not everyone uses the actual Crayola markers. Some people use the slightly off brand. And some people get the big pack and don't use don't and use a use a different use a slightly different tone. And the color corrected is there to say this is what this is what color Oscar thinks this is. And Purple is one of the worst is one of the worst for this because sometimes Oscar picks it up as purple, and like in this case, sometimes Oscar picks it up as blue, sometimes Oscar picks it up as red, and sometimes it picks it up as all three. I, I can see I can see you chuckling there, Baroness Cat, but it's true. <laughs> Anyone who's anyone who's done any work at Oscar will tell you it's true. It does. I'm impressed that it uh, saw the Fions and the uh, fields the same tincture. Yeah, sometimes it does that. Sometimes it doesn't do, stay consistent, even when the color is the same. And thank you, Tostic, for pointing that out. Um. And then at the, as I say, I do it on, I try to do it on the third every month. Sometimes I'm a little late. Sometimes I'm a day early, but I try to do it every month on the third. Sometimes if my letter gets full, I'll finalize it and start a new letter. Uh, that generally happens around golf. Even when golf doesn't happen, that still happens around golf because everyone saves up their submissions in Osteora, people save up their submissions to go to golf, to do it at golf. This is this is a known thing. In other kingdoms, they will. Uh, in other kingdoms, they'll save them up to go to Penzik with them. So, like Mid Realms Penzik letter is split to two months our golf letter often gets split into two months. 
and it's just based on it's based on numbers. Um, Laurel will not Laurel will not accept more than fifty items on any given letter, and that's total names, device devices, badges added together. They will not accept more than 50 items to a letter. I cut mine off at 40. And I did have to do that this year, this year at golf, uh, around when golf would have been. I cut my letter at 40 items. And the rest, I was still getting them. I just put them onto another letter. I started next month's letter early. Um, the other the other parts of the of the job it's keeping up with email um, it's generally good it's a generally good practice to when you receive an item to send back a response that says yes i've received it um, i know when i was a local that was something i always i always wanted and didn't get as often as i didn't get as often as I wanted to get it was to get back a to get back a reply of yes this is received this is received and I'm and I will process it I tend to batch process I tend to wait until let a whole week's worth of forms build up and batch process them all on batch process them all on Sunday morning or Saturday morning or batch process them all on the weekend but if you have if you ever become asterisk you can do it however you however you choose to me and when as i get them i put them in an in i put i have an in process folder and then i have a completed i have completed folders that are month by month and i have them on my personal drive on my personal computer because that's how i have to upload them to oscar they won't upload to Oscar from Google Drive. But once I've done that, I put them on I put them on the uh, asterisk Google Drive that Bourdieu has access to and Star has access to because Bourdieu will use them for the external letter. Remember, after they go through the internal letter, they go to an external letter for three months. Well, Bourdieu will pick them up off of the out of the drive to put them in the packet put them in the packet that goes to society. There's, like I said about the meeting, it's making sausage. It's not pretty, but, but it's got to get done. If it doesn't get done, the sausage doesn't get made. And the sausage doesn't get made, biscuits and gravy doesn't happen. And biscuits and gravy doesn't happen. None of the fighters are happy. Uh, that's that's mostly uh, that's mostly what asterisk does. It's administrative. It's it's administration. It's processing forms. It's keeping up on paperwork. It's it's a little bit of graphics processing, and it's a lot of data entry. Um, any questions? Any discussion? Anything I've terribly missed, Tostig? Why ask me? I wouldn't test that job with a 10-foot pole. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Former Question. star principal Harold Tostig. So, so you're saying that if I got a 12-foot pole... <laughs> you get what you pay for. Uh, Question. Uh, two questions. Uh, first one is financial. How do you pair the financial receipts? Um, I have asked local heralds to include the receipt, include a copy of the receipt when they send me the forms. Okay. You don't have to wait for kingdom to acknowledge that the kingdom received it. Not as long as I get the receipt. Okay. If, if local sends me the receipt, that's then that becomes a problem with the exchequers between local exchequer and kingdom exchequer. Okay. And question two, 
being computer illiterate, how do I know my JPEG is 300 DPI? Uh, it is in, uh, when you scan it, it's, it's in the scan settings. It's actually on the scan settings. Um, so when you scan it, there will be options. And one of the options, the one of the option, the options will be like PDF, JPEG, GIF, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm, I'm not, I don't really remember what the other ones are off the top of my head. Those are just the three main ones. And one of the things when you go into JPEG, one of the things that you'll, the options that'll be under that are resolution. And resolution, you'll, you'll want to, you'll want to make that 300 dots per inch. Thank you. You're welcome. And I Good agree Thomas. with, I agree with Star's comment. Friends don't let friends wait until golf. Thomas, I have a question. How much time per week do you spend on your duties as asterisk? It's highly variable on how much uh, on how many form how much forms I have to process. Typically, a couple hours. Typically, it's a couple hours plus uh, one to two hours once a month for the meeting. Uh, that is the other thing. If Bourdieu can't make can't make the decision meeting for whatever reason, it's on asterisk to. It is technically asterisk's job to deputize for Bourdieu on those meetings. Okay. Anybody else have questions for Thomas? Well, I am so brand new that everything's a question, so I'm just going to listen further. Oh, no, ask away. Ask away. I, That's why I'm here. I, uh, I just recently joined the SCA before the plague happened um, when everything you know, started shutting down. So I started to participate in Moonshadow meetings, and then we went on hiatus and back to Zoom. And I just now... Uh, will be finalize my membership before I send my name. I got to, you know, send them off for my name with the SCA. Right. So my question is, can we, how do we keep the integrity of the names submitted for membership versus the names that we finalize for persona? Uh, Cat, it looks like you want to. Uh... Four names. Your membership name is just for the card. What you finalize in submissions names is what gets registered. You can call yourself whatever you want uh, until you register a name. Uh, but what's on the card is just what they have for membership. For what you do in submission, that is the one that is becomes your primary name and that's what they work on and send up to first to our kingdom and then to Laurel. For example, if I, if I wanted to be, if I wanted to be that guy, I could put Henry Tudor on my blue card. Henry Tudor is not a registrable name. And you can, uh, you can actually buy a membership without putting anything in that field. So if you haven't settled on a name that you would like to be called, you can just send it in with that field blank and then enter, you know, write that information in at a later time. And you can get a replacement blue card, especially if you do change, if you do change that or put something, want to put something there, you can get a replacement blue card fairly easily. Appreciate it. Thank you. Happy to be happy to be of service. That's good to know. I never even thought about that. I think when we did ours, we already had our names picked. So, <laughs> but yeah, good question. Yeah, I mean, I already had my name picked. I'm one of those weird people that I was a, I was a month in again in Moonshadow. 
I had picked a name, I had picked a name, done the research, took it to, took it to at that time, uh, provincial Herald, Emma to say, Hey, could you check this? I don't know how to conflict check. Can you check this and make sure that this will fly? And the same with my armory, which, which I was, I, I had a great, uh, had a great compliment and he meant it as a compliment from Mahadi when I showed him my and my wife's armory and he called them aggressively simple. Yeah, I started out with my device trying to make it way more complicated than it need to be. And then somebody asked me, are you going to be able to draw that on things? And I was like, oh, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> so they said, you might want to make it a little more simple. And I thought, oh, that's really good advice. So it's much more simple now and I can draw it. <laughs> Mine's all straight lines. <laughs> Mine's got circles, but yeah, I can draw circles. <laughs> yeah. Mine's all straight lines. So is my wife's. <laughs> My wife's is field only. I was going to say when um, the gentleman asked about the putting the name in the thing, I got my membership without a name um, on that. And when my name was uh, went through, I just ordered a new membership and they sent it to me with my um, registered name. So it was not a big issue getting that registered name put on there. Yeah, I waited until it was time to renew membership and they just changed it there. Yeah, I think the first time I did, I did a three year at the first time. So it was kind of like, oh, wait a second. I tempted fate and lucked out. <laughs> oh, I registered my name like right away, but it was like four years later before I finally decided on what I wanted for arms and submitted that. And no one seemed to care. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you're doing something like going for landed or crown or something like that, not a lot of people really, uh, not a lot of people really care if you have arms or registered so, name. Even landed. My husband didn't have arms until he became an MOD. Really? Really. <laughs> we had a lot of, uh, very intense conversations about that, but yeah. Wins. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I knew I didn't like him. Oh, rude. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> yes, I'm having that same discussion with the Baroness, one of the Baronesses of Bonwick, who has um, a device she wants very badly, and I understand that. And unfortunately, her device won't work the way she has it drawn. So. Mm. Yeah, that's I, hard. I had uh, wait, Bonwick. You're saying Bonwick? Yes. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. I know. I know. I know the device you're talking about. Yeah, you do. Okay. Yeah. It's color on color. Yep. And no offense. And it, it just looks it's... wrong. <laughs> Other My than own personal being, opinion. Other than it being color on color, it's gorgeous. But yeah, color, on color. That is one of the other things you do is you do a last, you do a final QC before you send, before you put some, before you put it on the letter, and do a check for, do a final check for that instant bounce for those instant bounces like color on color, which I missed on the last letter, or. The things that you know that the things you know from reading commentary, it helps it helps as asterisk to keep up on commentary on commentary because you get to because you start to see the patterns of oh, this tends to be a problem or this ten this tends to cause arguments so you can you can sometimes you can sometimes send something back to a submitter and say hey this could be this could create a problem because of xyz are 
are you sure you want to do that? Or this is probably going to be a test case for this charge that you want. Are you prepared for that? But I will say with asterisk and with Wardier, it is a position that you can take not being wholly familiar with heraldry or the rules. It helps, but it's not a requirement. Um, one of my first jobs with the college was Bourdieu, and I had at that point just been a heraldic groupie who attended a few meetings. Um, and now I'm star, <laughs> and now I rule them. So it's definitely something that if you like administrative work, if you like doing paperwork and, and keeping things organized, that it is, if, if that's your wheelhouse, this is a position you could do. Yes, she was a scribe who was herald adjacent. How much it was adjacent to. Mm -hmm. In fairness, I was I was picking up heraldry stuff prior to him. He just exacerbated the issue, <laughs> like a fungus. <laughs> um, but absolutely, to echo that, I have picked up a whole lot, and I'm pretty good with Norse names. But especially with names, there's. You know, we've got a Japanese name coming up. We've got we've had Mongol names, Middle Eastern names. Uh, I've seen Egyptian names come through. I'm not an expert in all of that, but we have people to do that. So we rely a lot on our commentators. Uh, I don't need to be an expert in everything as Borgir to be able to do this job effectively. I, you can't be an expert in all those things. Mm -hmm. So uh, we rely on the people who comment on our letters. It's fantastic. Uh, it helps to know the rules, but you don't necessarily have to know all the research side. This light is so bright. It's washing me out That's so right. much, so much. <laughs> yes, it's very helpful to know what the rules are. You don't have to, you don't have to be able to parse the rules to a particular name, but knowing that we at least need a source for even something as simple as William. We at least need a source. But yes, this is mainly an administrative job. Surprisingly, local Herald is very much an administrative job. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of positions in the college are more administrative in nature. Um, I feel like the most forward facing of Herald positions is, is, is doing either voice heraldry or doing consultations when a lot of positions don't necessarily require that level of um, comfort with the rules. How often do you um meet other heralds who specialize in ceremonial ceremonial heraldry? I only caught half of that question. I was how often do you how often do you run across or do you meet up with other heralds that specialize ceremonial? So are you ceremonial? talking like voice heraldry? Yeah court like heraldry. voice court court heraldry. Court heraldry. Well, I mean, uh, Brian actually got his laurel in that sort of um, heraldry. What up? So um, it is not uncommon. We have a couple of, of heralds who do focus on that sort of thing. There is a court heraldry Facebook group, I believe. Uh, no, yeah, but it's society wide. It is society wide. Yeah. So there, there are a few places to um, to meet with like-minded folks. Uh, Different kingdoms will host ceremonies in different ways, and uh, even within kingdom, different groups will uh, trend or for peerage ceremonies. This is probably all above your head, but um, ceremonies can go from very fantastical to very period, and uh, there are folks who research many different sides of that. And there yes. was a class uh, in this academy when it was pretty early on where we had people like uh, Alejandro, uh, Sir Alejandro, Master Robin, myself, Master Alden, and a few other people doing that. So if you search in the uh, Virtual Academy of Service-Minded Individuals, go back. It's, it was one of the earlier classes, but we did a panel specifically on court heraldry. And I'm sure uh, Kat knows all about that because she was there. 
<laughs> yeah, um, um, we actually do have a uh, recording of that as well. So if you want to look back and watch uh, the video, it was a panel discussion with a lot of uh, former Kingdom uh, court heralds. So that would yeah. be a great uh, resource. So the short answer is that if that is your interest, you are not alone. And uh, we do have a Facebook group, the Heraldic, Onstior and Heraldic Consultation Group, that you're welcome to join and uh, post questions there as well. Thank you, I pre thank you, I appreciate it. Um, because since I've joined, our local Herald is stepping down and retiring and we have a position opened up and one of the officers reached out to me and said, you're very interested in Herald and you're new. Do you wanna try to fill this position soon? And I said, yes, you know, cause knowledge is the key to power. That's awesome. I would definitely recommend uh, talking to some people that have been voice heralds or just a baronial herald for your group, um, get some pointers and tips. Uh, but yeah, no, that's great. I was, yeah. I was at one point, my first heraldic office was provincial herald for Moonshadow, so. And we are working on a library of uh, resources so that is absolutely something that we will have up and running fairly soon here, and you'll be able to use that as well. Hmm. YouTube hmm. channel. Yeah, and the YouTube channel. Our, uh, the College of Heralds does have a new YouTube channel, which everyone should subscribe to, um, that has a few classes as well. So I've got my vocal heraldry and Alden's court heraldry classes on there as well. <laughs> awesome. We're just so is that, all is, the things. are those YouTube channels different from the, uh, for instance, uh, I know their Kingdom of the East has, um, some Herald stuff too. Oh yeah. These, yeah. Yeah, these are largely uh, homegrown. Okay. It's the yeah. Osterlin College of Heralds YouTube channel. And right okay. now it's mostly classes from uh, our virtual uh, Onster and Herald Dickens Travel Symposium. Okay. Um, August. Yes. Awesome, okay. Would you correct Adam, the East Kingdom website has marvelous educational videos as well. Mm -hmm. Highly recommend all of them. Yes, uh, EKHU is excellent, excellent uh, be from beginner to intermediate. All yeah, right, guys, well, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, yeah, there are a ton of really good resources out there um, between websites and YouTube that are uh, kind of across the known world. So we are after eight o'clock. So um, if no one has any other questions or any other topics they want to bring up. Uh, we can go ahead and jump off. Thank you, Your Excellency, for the opportunity to uh, present about uh, Asterisk Herald. Thank you so much for teaching. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Everybody have a good evening, and we All will right. talk yeah, again soon, I'm too. sure. Bye. Bye, everybody. Take care.